We the church going as people there is. But yet we live and act and think, think like the world. Because yeah. we're not set apart. Yeah. Amen. So it's not hard for us to drive past or have no heart for those who are lost or to pray for them. Because we don't have the Lord's heart. We know somebody ought to be talking to them people, but not me because I don't have his heart. Can you say amen? Look at your neighbor and tell them you got to be a saint before you die. All these people dying and then they, they saints. Read your Bible. Paul says, and to the saints that are at Ephesus. To the saints that are at Thessalonica. To the saints that are at Shepherd's Fold. Yeah. He didn't write to the ain'ts. He didn't say to the church members. To the saints. You got to be a saint before you die. Now, in your understanding, what is a saint? If I, if I stood up here, the, the Bible, every one of these books, uh, uh, in the beginning it says, uh, the gospel according to St. John, the gospel according to St. Mark, the gospel according to St. Matthew. So, so my, my new, new where I want you to address me is St. Stephen. Right. Now, the very fact that I said that going to cause a whole lot of y'all look at me and say, yeah, he ain't, he ain't, say, he can't say he a saint. But that's the only people the Bible is written to. It's not written to the lost. A lost man can look in here and see how God thinks. But it's written to the saints. And if you ain't a saint now, you ain't, you ain't, and, and you ain't a saint when you die, you ain't going to be a saint when you're raised. Now, I know that would be too much for your religion if I said, for now, call me Saint Stephen. But your name ought to be saint whoever you are because you are just that soul out and dedicated in your mind. He says, you got to love me with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. But see, we can't say it, nor can we allow anybody else to say it because we don't love God that way. But we want God to send us to his heaven. And he says, that's the only way you're going to go. We say don't, we can go because we went to the church and we've done church work. But he says that you got to love me with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. you got to deny yourself. Now, to, to me, I'm asking you to think what it would be uh, for you to be a saint. How would you love God? You would love him with all your heart, all your mind, all your mind. So the fact that we can't walk in that dimension of faith says that somewhere we, have, we don't have that desire to love him with all our heart, all our mind, and all our strength. Yeah. But Mark and them was men just like you and me. John and them was men just like you and me. And it sounds like uh, if I said that I'm giving, I'm giving myself a title, he's giving himself a title. Amen. My name is St. Stephen. Somebody, then, then, then what happened is this committee of people will watch, be watching everything I say and do, and you should. But that's the reason we won't do it, because now everybody's watching everything you say or do. I ain't no saint now, but uh, okay, well, you going to hell then. I ain't no saint, but I, I love the Lord. <laughs> you, you, you going to hell. Because the blood was shared to make it say. Now, this is not to say that there's not grace for young converts and people who are just beginning. God understands that. But if you're not striving, and some things we strive for. The Bible says strive to enter in at the narrow gate, at the straight gate. What would a saint do? When you decide to be saint, whoever your first name is, what gate you going to strive to enter into? Or you're going to be a saint and walk on Broadway. These are things have to become part of your attitude, your mindset. And they will cause you to be persecuted, talked about, 
people to think that you think you're goody two-shoes. Folk won't understand your commitment. Family members, friends, church members. The devil's going to find a reason to talk about you. But are you a saint or not? Amen. And most people, no, I'm not a saint. I, da, da, da. But then, uh, then you need to repent and get under the blood. See, because you're called to be a saint, not after you die. Because you don't know what happens to them people who wait to the last second. You're going to put all it. well, you know, yeah, I, if you don't live holy. Cause my uncle, he was, you know, he, he had a house full of stable, full of women. He was still drinking boom for him. And he, he, but at last minute he gave you, oh, you're going to try that trick? And that's what a lot of people have fallen for that. Amen. So look at your neighbor and say, you're going to have to be a saint before you die. Now, where does it start? It starts by letting the Holy Ghost sanctify you. Holy Spirit, sanctify me. Jesus said it in his word. Say it with me. Holy Spirit, sanctify me. Now, it's up to you to know the truth and know where he wants to sanctify you. Because everything you're doing, even though it's lawful, it ain't good. So you can't go to God and say, I don't drink, I don't sleep around. Because he says, so what? There's other stuff that you're doing that even though it's lawful, it ain't good. It shows you're not sanctified. Separate it for my purpose. And it's the truth. And all this preaching is to do is to spark you to look at the truth because you can become offended. And a lot of people are offended at this because they're used to the candy. Oh, the Lord, he the Lord, he has so many blessings, so many blessings. You will never see him. <laughs> Sanctification in no way eliminates personal struggle. See, that's the misconception. That when somebody, because back in the day, they'd say, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, and I'm full of the Holy Ghost. And they would have struggles on occasion. And that's when all of the people come out and say, yeah, she, she's talking about she's saved, but, you know, she over there trying to date Billy. That was a weakness. She needed to repent about it and move on. But instead of people praying for him or her, they tore him up. So then they went to backslide because Billy or uh, Silly was there to give them all the affection in their disobedience. Yeah, you ain't got to be all churchy like they say. Come on here, be with me. Brought them that Delilah spirit. Come on, lay your head in my lap. Come on here, I'll tell you something. Yeah, all that church, they just being, they think they all that. Yeah, you deceived is what you are. And the church has to pray. Because just because you're sanctified don't mean you're not going to have a struggle. That's where the struggle come in, trying to separate yourself from people. Folk trying to, women trying to break you off from loving. Men trying to break you off some, take you out and show you a big time because I'm trying to, you know. That's where the struggle come in. Getting in company with liars. Yeah, I'm going to hang up the phone. I can't talk to y'all. Y'all lying. That's where the struggle come in. Nobody say because you're sanctified is easy. But what happens, we see somebody trying to be sanctified, and so we say with that sanctimonious self. So we become what you call a persecutor. We persecute Jesus. Yeah, look at her. Sanctified. But got mad the other day. Sanctified, but then I heard them say a cuss word. They say D-A-M-E in the, uh, the other day when the idea, yeah, they sanctified, they wouldn't say all that. Yeah. It's true. In that area, they need to sanctify themselves. Because some of y'all used to say the word begin with the M, and uh, yeah, but you don't say that no more. Because you sanctified yourself. I hate to spell it out like that, but I'm just trying to be honest with you. So the person who's being persecuted can't go there with them because people get offended at your sanctification. Oh, you ain't said nothing. Man, y'all you make me go preach now. You ain't said nothing. People get offended at your sanctification. Everybody, oh, praise God, you sanctified now? Oh, you so 
separating yourself from sin. You ain't trying to do that no more. Oh, well, hallelujah. Or they looking at you with contempt. All I want to do is read your Bible. Try going out with a man that, that uh, and be sanctified, and he ain't. Yeah, put that down. Put that down. Come on, let me holler at you. Put that down. Put that down. <laughs> well, come on over. You come on over. Let's let's read the Bible for a while. You know, all right, all right. Uh, Jesus wept. Okay, now let's put that down. <laughs> this book got power. Everybody say ain't got no power. Pull it out. Pull it out when somebody trying to get you to take your clothes off. Pull this book out. Get the big one, the one that you put on the living room table. Get it, pull it out. You ain't got to read nothing. This book will cause demons to tremble. Yeah, yeah pull this book out. You can't want to get a purse big enough, a wallet big enough to carry this book. Come on, let's have some sex right now. I want to sex you up. See how they be backtrading. This book will shake them up. Yeah. Pull this book. We, we ain't got that kind of book. Pull this book out when there's a disagreement with somebody. Yeah. You say, what? Yeah. They be like, what you get the book for? What you get the book for? <laughs> I'm just reading while you're talking. They only want you to read while they talking because you're going to run up on the truth. Yeah. <laughs> they are lying and they <laughs> God is not the author of got power. Carry this book to work. Carry this book to work. Walk in the office with this book. And see how many people look at you like you boo-boo the fool. Go get gas and pay for your gas. Give me 415 and have this book in your hand. And see what people say. Take this to the family reunion. Everybody popping the tops. And you sitting there with you the whole time. How y'all doing, ain't it? Uncle, how, what's going on? How, how's it going? And you got this book. Man, you're going to shake up the whole joint. This book got power. Don't tell me the book ain't got no power. Man. Sit on your porch and let your neighbors see you reading this book. And see if they don't shush when they come by there. Go in the break room where they cussing and open this book up and see if all the cussers don't say, ooh, be quiet, be quiet. She, 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 she. they in here. That's why the devil don't care you got the book on your phone now. Used to be a time all you do is carry the book. And somebody be like, something different about you. Let's have a praise break. The father looks at the motive. You can have a book in your house and people come in your house, your kids come in the house and, walk, and they, ooh, mama, daddy reading the book. They be quiet. The spirit just jump all out this book. I really believe you could be in a place where somebody going to rob you and you got this book. They liable to back up on you. People will think you slow because you got it. This book got power. Let's take another praise break. Come on. We're rushing on. Psalm 96 and 9 says, worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. When you are, I use the word striving because so much of what is taught in the last 20, 25 years say you don't have to strive for anything. That's why we don't pray. That's why we don't fast. That's why we don't come to church. That's why we don't read our Bibles. Because they took strive. Jesus said strive. Jesus, your Savior, said strive. He didn't say, now, when I do this, you just sit, sit on your behind and believe. He said strive. So the Bible says worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. And what that means, Psalm 96 and 9, is that because you know, Lord, I've been am totally committed to you that when you lift up your hands, you know that your hands are clean. You cannot worship God properly, and you know that your hands are unclean. Come on now. You know you in something. You can do the form of it, 
But when you know you deliberately have said no to some things, you said yes to God. When you lift your hands, you have, the Bible says you have confidence toward God. It ain't that God can't reach you, but your, our sins is what separate. But when we know, Lord, you know what? I held my peace when they was on me. I held my peace. Lord, I kept joy. I read my Bible this morning, and I'm glad I did because something jumped off, and I could have got. And then when you, you can worship, but when you know you've been right in there with them. So it said, worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Meaning there's a certain something that the Spirit gives to you because you've made that effort. But you feel guilt when you hear the truth and you know that you have been in the wrong place. Listen, the Holy Ghost was given to make you holy. Not to help you sing better. Not to help you preach better. Not to help you pay a bill. Not to help you figure out how to manipulate God to get a car. Not to help you to look cute. The Holy Spirit was given to you. So if you say you got the Holy Spirit, then you should be desiring, walking, praying, pleading. That's what supplication is. Prayer and supplication. Lord, make me holy. Somebody say, well, Jesus made you holy because of his blood. No, he didn't. He justified you. Holiness comes, sanctification on a daily, daily, I got to put away this. I got to put away that. I got to move toward this. Amen. Y'all ain't saying much, but I guess you're still here. 2 Corinthians 13 and 14. Amen. Oh, God, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Forgive us for our sin. Forgive us for our sin. Forgive us for our sin. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, then we are lying and the truth is not in us. Y'all going to have to put these phones down and all of this stuff. I'm preaching, teaching God's word and all this walking has got to stop. So I'm checking them at the door. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. When we desire to be in a holy place with God, we've got to learn how to, to put everything else aside. Now, I love you, what I just said, so don't let that put a bad taste in your mouth, but there's far too much walking. Amen. It's not just one person, it's everybody. Second Timothy 1 and 9, he saved us and he called us to a holy calling. So he didn't just save you if you're saved, but he called you to a holy calling. I want to eliminate this in your, your mindset. I go to church now. That is not proof that you are walking in a holy calling. And yet it's the biggest deception that the enemy used. You should go to church. You should hear what many probably hearing this or yourself. They don't want to hear this. But how can we expect sinners to repent if we don't repent? He told us to do the work to save sinners. He told us to go and preach to them. But why would we preach to them about something we are not willing to do? When we as the kingdom repent because God is holy, God is coming to soon, even if we can't walk and go, we'll pray and try to encourage others to go. But don't expect to go to heaven and you spent your whole life in pursuit of things in this world for you. That's a deception. Now, you got plenty of preachers that told you or made you feel like just because you go to church, you're going to be saved. 
But you don't have Bible to say that. Yet the Bible says you should go to church because you're supposed to hear the truth. But it ain't the only truth you're supposed to hear. The truth you're supposed to hear is the truth coming from the pages of that book through the Holy Spirit and your personal relationship with Christ and the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Because we can't preach to you. Because even now, time's up. You know, I've been in church long enough to know time's up. Especially if you say what I just said about phones. Everybody, you know, I didn't come here for this. I came here, you know, I would hear joy and tell me something good. Now you tell me to put my phone up there. This is a control freak up in here. You know, there's a whole lot of people watching that saying, well, I bet I won't be coming because I'm bringing my God with me. And if, my, if I get a phone call, I'm taking my God outside. Okay, that's fine with you. I ain't going to argue with you. But what I'm trying to say is that this little brief time ain't nothing compared to the holiness truth that God wants to download in your life. And if it don't spark you to think about it, that he says in Matthew 5, 48, be perfect as your heavenly father is imperfect. Now, he either said it or he didn't say it. Now, the question is, what are we going to do with it? How, 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 how we fix it up so it, 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 it ain't got no salt in it? Because that ought to be something to be perfect. You know, i tell you what, the first thing when we pull a salt out, well, can't nobody be perfect. Ain't nobody perfect but God. But then, Jesus, why are you asking me to do something that I can't do? Be perfect. Because he's saying if you let the Holy Spirit, he will bring you into a spiritual perfection. He will reprove you. When you're wrong, just because you, 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 you miss one of the questions don't mean that when you take the test again, you're not going to get them. It don't mean here, just take this grade I made teacher and leave me alone. Give me my C minus and I'm gone. No, he says be perfect. So some things you're going to keep getting to until you are perfect. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. God ain't going to let you escape because you, you a sister with an attitude. You are a brother with an attitude, B BWA. You're an NWA. Because he, he, he loves you, he ain't going to back up off of you because you roll your eyes at him in the spirit realm. You ain't got to be afraid of me or no other man, they man like me. Yeah, but that spirit, he knows you and he know how to deal with you. And he's saying that I want you to be perfect. So in certain attitudes where we are imperfect, he's saying that ain't good enough. They just going to have to like it this way. No, he says that ain't good enough. He says right here, Matthew 5, 48, be you perfect because your heavenly father is imperfect. So what you going to do with it? Do with that. You need a preacher to lie about your life at the graveside. Yeah, your mama them to say, he, my boy got a good heart. Oh, he's a good kid. Yeah, but the littlest baby in here ain't nothing but a, a sinner uh, about to go out of control. Until they're born again, ain't nothing good in them. I know, oh, no, my little angel. It ain't no angel. They're a sinner. And in them is the seed to commit every kind of sin known to man. Every kind of sin. Amen. You see, they're going to grow up and they, and they, they don't do nothing, but they did this. This is one little thing. They lie sometimes, but then they've they broken all the other commandments because they lie, they'll steal. They sin us. The infant that just came out the womb today is a sinner and needs to be born again. Hey, somebody, where did they, they die early? Get out of here. That ain't this sermon. They're a sinner. Because all of us got the family disease that come from my family, mom and daddy called Adam and Eve. It's in every last one of them. And you got to be born again. Amen. And that Holy Spirit comes to bring you and me into perfection of what the first Adam and Eve were walking in. And when we say, I don't want to be perfect, this me, I'll be how I want to. He said, well, you, gonna, you, you can, you can uh, deal with the consequences of that too. We don't want to hear the word, but you can go to hell. Why is it that there's no teaching in our churches on hell? And where there's no teaching on hell, there's no faith that there is a hell. The devil has convinced us that nobody's going to hell. Not even the worst person. Not even the one that killed all the kids in Texas. Because if, if, he, if he repented before he pulled the trigger, he going to heaven. Not, not people that it's known that they was big sinners. Ain't nobody going to, to hell no more. 
Because the devil has convinced even the church. That's why we cannot see lost loved ones and family and friends on their way to hell. Because we figure they just got a drinking problem. But if they are not being set apart, this is where it gets tough. They're not being set apart. Christ don't justify what you know to do and won't do. Oh, Justification is when you come in. But after you've been in and you've heard truth, Justification don't work where you're rebellious against truth. So some of us who doing stuff going to say, well, I'm Lord. I mean, he can say, you ain't justified because you know better. It was too hard. You should have died then to the flesh. Or you should have cut that member off. If it was your private organ that was on fire. You should have stuffed something around it to keep it, put it out because you, you go into hell and that's just the end of it. Yeah. You ain't got to get mad at the preacher. And a lot of people are confused about that. You can't judge nobody. I can't judge nobody, but you, the word judges us. How you live is how you're going to be resurrected. And if you want to live on the edge that I ain't going to be too hot for the Lord, guess what? Revelation, then I'm going to spit you out my mouth because I want you hot. He ain't say, well, if you don't come up, that's okay. He says you better be hot or cold because if you're cold, you got an opportunity to warm up. But if you lukewarm, where a lot of people are, they're right in the middle. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 2 says you're called to be saints. Let's look at it in case y'all don't. Y'all think I'm just making that up. You ain't called to be members of this church first. You're called to be saints. Amen. Amen. And if, if on occasion we hold you to the, to, the, to the Bible 